Good morning and welcome to the second session of income and employment. Now in this session we are going to see some of the most crucial factors like the marginal propensity to consume and save and we are also going to talk about certain factors like how we are going to determine the income in terms of the equilibrium and in the short run condition. So just moving forward these are the topics that we are going to cover in this session. First one, marginal propensity to save. We have seen the average propensity to save in the previous session. Now we're going to see the marginal propensity. So this is going to be a slightly a different mode altogether. Average propensity to consume, the next part of it. We have seen the marginal propensity in the last one. Now we are going to see about the average propensity. Investment, a very, very important topic which is a part of the macroeconomics, it's a part of our day-to-day -day life. So we are going to spend some time in terms of understanding what is investment. Determination of income in a two-sector model. So we are going to try to involve the government and the household, try to understand a two-sector model. And we are going to determine the equilibrium income in a short run. So these are the topics that we are going to cover in today's session. Moving forward. The marginal propensity to save. It is a change in savings per unit change in income. It is denoted by S and it is equal to 1 minus C. So what is that? It implies the factors here for us. Now, if you look at the importance of savings in our day-to-day -day life, we always try to understand or we always try to question ourselves with the simple factor. Can I save one rupee more than the previous month? Where is that concept coming from? Why? Because we are not happy with the factor that what we are doing every time. We want more. We want to propel ourselves. We want to move forward. We want to think ourselves as a personality who can do better and better every time, every step we take. So the concept also dwells in macroeconomics. We feel that with the rise in income or with the equal income being there, we want to save more. So this month, if you would have saved 10 rupees, the next month you want to save 12 rupees, the next month 15 rupees. So your mind always triggers you with the factor saying that, can you save more and more? So that's why we come to this concept where we try to understand it is the change in savings per unit change in income. So moment there is a small change in income, automatically the propensity to save will also start moving up. So that is represented, it is equal to 1 minus C, 1 minus consumption. After every unit that you have consumed, now you will start thinking, can I put that extra money back to savings? Can I go back to that piggy bank concept altogether? I don't want to relax. Even if I get 1 rupee, can I put it back? Can I go back and do some sort of savings? Can I increase my savings so that in the long run, I would be able to create wealth for myself? So the marginal propensity to save does not stand there. It pulls you up. It makes you understand the factor that even a small change in income here and there will automatically propel up my savings, will automatically make a change to my savings mentality altogether. So that is why marginal propensity says that that marginal effect, the small effect, the minute effect that you see in the change, automatically there will be a change in the savings. So I am going to use this word change very very commonly. Why? Because that what matters in macroeconomics to a great extent. Tomorrow when the economy opens up and automatically the salary starts going up, the savings will also tend to go up. So that's why we use this word called as marginal propensity to save. Moving forward, average propensity to consume. What is this factor? How do I consume more? What is my average consumption? If I spend 5000 rupees every month, will I keep on spending 5000 rupees every month? Or will I try to do something which is even more better? Or will I try to increase, decrease? All these questions always comes in the minds of consumers, in the minds of the citizens. So it is always important that we try to understand the average propensity to consume. How is it defined? It is defined, it is the consumption per unit of the income. 
that is an interesting topic or a point to understand how much do you want to consume what is the best utilization of each and every rupee that you earn so you need to understand the formula c by y the factor called as consumption per unit of the income so here if you see that if you are earning 10,000 rupees and assume that for a month you want to enjoy each and every one rupee of your income then what will you do you would like to go ahead and see that you enjoy till the last one rupee but that's not going to happen in reality you will try to save at least one rupee you will try to save some part some fraction of your money no doubt about it but then given a chance what consumers would try to understand is that to what extent i can propel my consumption to what extent can I keep that average benchmark altogether? Because most of the time, the averages will keep changing. The consumption factor will keep changing in our mindset. We want to increase, we want to decrease, sometimes we want to remain constant. So the consumption in an economy is a very dynamic factor. Now, when you look into a situation like the current scenario that we are going through, automatically what happens in this level, the consumption level starts coming down during an emergency period, during a pandemic kind of a situation. The consumption levels will dip because people don't have money. But moment the situation becomes better, the average consumption will again start shooting up in the market. So that is why it is very, very important that the average factor, the average consumption or the, you know, the propensity to that to consume starts going up in any of the macroeconomic condition consumption is going to drive the economy and this is a very important factor that the government and every institution would be interested to know upon moving forward investment now this is a topic which i was trying to talk about now if you just have a quick look into the graph into the diagram that we have been showing here this is very very interesting factor you see that the arrow mark is going up. Now everybody is interested on a factor called as investment. Why is that? Well, investment is actually defined as investing in some form of asset. As I told you, it might be a land, labor, capital, or you're trying to invest in gold, or you're trying to invest in the markets altogether. But then economically speaking, what is investment all about? Let's try to understand. Investment is defined as addition to the stock of physical capital such as machines, buildings, roads, infrastructure, whatever that can be added for the future productive capacity of the economy and the changes in the inventory of a producer. Now this is very very important for us to understand and know. Now when I say investment investment is not just about those gold or silver or commodities or markets it is about investing in the inventory so now we are going to talk about land building machinery and all the technological factors that will add up to the inventory of the producer so for a producer investment is again putting money back into the business so that he is able to do things better so that is very very important here putting the money back into the business plowing the profits back into the business in the form of inventory in the form of machinery in the form of technology so that he is able to propel his business to the next level as far as possible so that is why when i say that for a producer investment is a different angle or a different process altogether for most of us investment is only for private wealth but for a producer it's a different level because he might think from a business productivity altogether. So for any large companies in this world, they will always try to understand inventory as the primary asset that they own so that using that they will be able to progress and they will be able to make a better production altogether. So more and more inventory and more and more production out of it will automatically improve the revenue of the company which in turn will improve the macroeconomic development of the country altogether. So that is why investment will play a very very important role when it comes to macroeconomics altogether. So this is function which is very very important for us to know and this is also important from the exam standpoint now moving forward 
now determination of income in a two sector model now who are those two sectors for us first to understand now before we try to understand this there are two sectors whom we are going to talk about the sector number one is going to be government no doubt about it because government is going to be the factor who are going to run through the situation altogether and then we also are going to talk about sector number two called as the producer here so when you're going to talk about these two factors the producer and the government let us try to understand how does the income model works out in an economy without a government for example now suppose if the government is not there then the ex ante demand for the final goods is the sum of total ex ante consumption so there is a producer and there is a consumer so now government is not there in a picture for a moment let's assume that government is not there if there is no government then there is only a producer and a consumer now what will happen in that case you will just get this factor c plus i that is consumption plus investment there is a consumer because he is consuming your goods whatever you are producing and there will be an investment why because that investment in the form of expenditure will again go back into the inventory so that is your two sector model very simple you are producing for the consumer the consumer will consume your goods and there will be an investment which is considered to be an expenditure in the form of inventory so that is the first thing that you try to understand out of this simple economy now in a planned economy assuming government comes into picture so the government will actually try to understand this factor that it will be a regulatory effect it will try to regulate the economy altogether so that is why we we try to say that even though planned income planned y when i use the word y y stands for income it is greater than the planned factor of c plus i that is consumption plus investment put together income is always greater than consumption plus investment but in reality what will be the factor is that income will be equal to y income will be equal to c plus i altogether so y will be equal to c plus i income will be equal to consumption plus investment that means to say that an unintended accumulation of inventory exposed on the right hand side of the accounting identity so inventory will always be there by without your knowledge without your default factor altogether there will be an investment that will happen altogether and so at the end of the day what you will see is that whatever might be the income for that income there will be a consumption plus investment so at any given point of time savings will become a crucial factor for the company for the company whatever money that is earned it will become either on the consumption mode or on the investment mode a combination of two will give them the income factor altogether moving forward now we will try to talk about it in an equilibrium stage altogether for what is an income at the first stage we are assuming an economy of unused resources so the first level there is no usage of resources that is machinery building land road whatever is that so the law of diminishing return will not be applied at all which means to say that you are not utilizing the resources so nowhere the resources are getting diminished nowhere the resources are coming down altogether so now what is happening is that accordingly price level does not vary even if the quantity produces changes because of no usage no additional output is also being taken into factor so there will not be a price level variation that will happen because you are not producing anything the output is not also on an any added factor but then this is just a simplifying assumption which will be changed later so this is only an assumption factor that we are not going to utilize any inventory we are not going to utilize any of the factors and we are just going to keep on producing but in reality let us try to understand in any of the economy 
for the economy to propel for the economy to produce for the economy to come up to a particular level you need to change this assumption you need to make use of the machinery the buildings the roads the infrastructure so the law of diminishing returns will automatically come why this is true because when you start utilizing the resources all together automatically there will be a diminishing factor that will make you come down that will make you flow down altogether. You will be utilizing the resources at a particular level and automatically the value of those resources will start coming down. So that is why here we try to make it very clear saying that once the assumption is removed and we start going towards onto the reality basis, the assumption will not hold good. We will start using all the inventories. The companies will start using all the inventories and they will start propelling forward. So that is why this factor is only an assumption for an equilibrium. Equilibrium position cannot be hold for a long time in the economy. There will be disruption, which means to say that sometimes we'll use more of inventory. Sometimes we'll use less of inventory, but we are not going to stand exactly at the midpoint and continue doing the same kind of economy run altogether. So with this, I would like to come to the conclusion of today's session. So in this session, I hope and believe that it was interesting, informative and educative for you in terms of understanding the investment and the income determination method. In the coming sessions, we shall be trying to understand about the different levels of income determination model. Plus, we will also try to understand something called as paradox of thrift and the new models in terms of employment altogether. Thank you once again for joining me on the session and I hope and believe that the concepts will be very very important and they will add value to your life. Thank you again.